Hey guys, we're going to get real with today's opening sponsor. They're asking you, do you think it's okay to drive stoned? Here's the truth. Your reaction time slows way down when you're high. Not only are you in danger, but so is everyone around you. So stop kidding yourself. If you've been using marijuana in any form, please don't get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. Learn more at NHTSA.gov. Drive high, get a DUI. Hey, enjoy some sober driving, all right? But for now, enjoy the show. This is the Art of Wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. It's Colt Cabana. All right. How you guys doing? Come on in. Sit down. Relax. You're about to listen to the Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entryway into the minds, the souls, the hearts, and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Cole Cabana. I am a fringe goer. I am a fringe participant. I am an entertainer of not only adults, hipster adults, children, hipster children, and everything in between. But of course, most importantly, I am a professional wrestler. I am not sitting here live in my studio. Apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Nope, I am at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in Edinburgh, Scotland. Coming to you live from my flat in between doing 26 straight shows of comedy slash and or wrestling. Before we go any further, there's a fan support and listener supported podcast supported by people just like you. We give it to you free of charge every single Thursday. ColeCommander.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcast from. A couple great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes just like the Iceman Forever did. Email me your address and I'll send out an autographed Japanese DDT ticket to you. You can also use social media to spread the word. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. The best way that you can support, though, ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, t-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, children's book, micro brawlers, brand new wrestling for Freedom of Speech t-shirts done by Mr. Patterson himself out there in Canada. It's a great shirt. Check it out. ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com. I am still in the middle of the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, and I am having the time of my life, as I always do. It is so much fun. I welcome anyone, anyone who's ever wanted to do something different, wanted to see the world, wanted to take in some shows. Uh, There's a show happening every single hour of every single day from the 1st to the 27th of August. It is so fun. It is so special out here. Join me wherever you live in the world. Join me. Today's episode, once again, I will be having the comics who came on the show with Brendan and I. We watch Bad Wrestling. We do comedy and commentary to it. The show format essentially is Brendan and I. We talk for about 10 minutes up top. We bring on our guest. Our guest will talk about maybe a little bit what we talked about before. Then we'll kind of talk about a little bit about wrestling. And then we will start watching some matches. So I like the idea that I can podcast the part where the guest sits down and we talk to the guest. It's always something different, it's always kind of about wrestling, and it's always fun. So the format of this show is, if there's anything I need to tell you before the guest comes on, I will tell you before the guest comes on. That way you'll have some context, and then we will play the audio from the show. The first clip we're going to play is from Friday, August 17th, joined by John Robertson, who's been a staple on this podcast and on the shows at The Fringe, loves professional wrestling, kind of looks like Ric Flair. And I'll let you know, before he came on stage, he burst into the room thinking that he was late, covered in everything, hot dog, mustard, butter, just all types of food. Our show starts at 11. His show ends at like 11.10. So whenever he's the guest, he has to kind of like run over to the venue. And that's why we do make some comments about his appearance. So let's throw it to this show with John Robertson. Fucking hell. Okay, well, there's some unanswered questions. Have a seat, John. John, your microphone is over here. By the way, if some of you Thank know, you. is this a different show every night? Yes. Yes, it is. The, this isn't like a cur. I, I know you looking at it going, this just seems too fucking smooth. I would love if we scripted all of that. That'd be great. Mate, I wasn't smooth enough. That's why I'm covered with butter. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go on. What happened? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, that's even better. Give it no context whatsoever. Perfect. Just sit there covered in shit. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> well, let's, let's put it this way. I wanted to do an impression of every 80s wrestler I liked. I couldn't find any baby oil. I fucking made do. Now... <laughs> Hey, what, res- what 80s wrestlers do you like, John? What 80s wrestlers do I like? I like Hulk Hogan because his bleached hair reminds me of how my fucking hairline's going. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I also like Wildfire Tommy Rich because I've been heckled by NWA fans who were like, you look like him. And I'm like, uh, who the fuck cares? That is that is the most niche reference you could fucking find. Also, you don't want to look like him now. You look like, actually, you've just literally been born. Like... <laughs> 
<laughs> like this is Ric Flair's even more unwanted yeah. son. Woo! <laughs> Genetically it, inferior. Now, <laughs> this is the love child of Mae Young and Mark Henry. Yay! I wish. Yes. yes. Nailed it, sir. You Thank nailed it. Thank you, sir, it. for explaining sir, our joke to us. you nailed it. Yep. You got Somewhere. it. You Somewhere. nailed it, sir. I can't believe you knew yep. I was talking about his hand. Somewhere, somewhere between a wrestling fan and a Wikipedia citation is that fucking guy. <laughs> citation needed. Cha-cha, cha-cha, cha. All right. Wait a minute. Oh. What? Where does cha-cha, cha-cha, cha? <laughs> Cha -cha wrestling in a Brazilian no, 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 no. restaurant. Cha 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 is the noise that you would make if the clapping were done verbally. And it also takes wrestling away from the macho and back to what it is, which is just fucking jazz ballet on steroids. <laughs> now, how are you? I remember seeing you at the jazz ballet school. You used to beat the shit out of the other kids. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got off steroids. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Really? That's the second time you've kicked that microphone all around. That's why I don't give a fuck. <laughs> he's only he's only attacking it because its shape reminds him of his fucking head. Now, oh. Oh. fuck's sake! Ladies and gentlemen, John Robertson, Brendan Burns, are you ready to watch a little wrestling? Yeah. If you're in town and want to check out John's show, he does three of them. But uh, my favorite is a show called The Dark Room, an interactive text-based video game. It's at 8 o'clock at the Underbelly Cowgate. Our next guest, he doesn't do it anymore, but he used to walk around the Edinburgh Finch Festival with a giant red spandex outfit, head to toe, and then these big bushy eyebrows that he would put on. And his name was Pun Man. But he is no longer a pun man, but he still has those beautiful puns, and I'll ask him about it. This is from Saturday, August 18th, with Scottish comedian, and you'll hear it in his voice, Leo Curse. Hello, Leo! Hello, Colt! How you doing? I'm great! Nice to be here. Brendan's I'm energetic as ever. Oh, man, I'm over the moon. Yeah. He's been drinking a lot of that uh, monster stuff. Fucking! I'm pissing crystals! <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. He's yeah. the king of the monsters. <laughs> nah. You're a, listen, Leo. You're how tall are you? I'm six foot six. Do you ever think about getting into the wrestling game? Yeah, I was thinking about it. But have, have you seen the state of UK wrestlers? Well, I, I just remember wrestling from when I was a kid, which was about fifty-seven years ago. It was all like uh, giant haystacks and Big Daddy. It was just fat guys who probably couldn't even like bend over to pick something up off the ground. <laughs> now it's all different. You got to be like hulked out, like you know, all like ripped with steroids and stuff. Hey, whoa, hey, whoa, hey. <laughs> Come on! I like how Brendan thinks he's a wrestler. <laughs> Although you are looking fucking jacked. Are you in the gas, buddy? Yeah, fucking, I'll, I'll, I'll take some fucking growth hormone in a heartbeat. I'm 47, the cock doesn't work properly anymore. Come on. Oh, we should give the take your clothes off thing. It gets hot no, in here. No, let's just leave it at that. Yeah. It gets hot in here. If you've got a jacket, take it off now. <laughs> While Brendan stares at you. Yeah, wait, hang on. Shall I lead him into it with the Rick Rude fucking thing? All right, hang on. I reckon, I'll, I'll, I'll start. Look, see, this is fucking Glaswegians and Celtic people for you, right? You fucking, you just, you don't trust that it's not going to rain. You're inside. Calm the fuck down. Take your fucking coat off, you dumb cunt. You won't coat. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't have my glasses on. I went, oh, lady, sorry. I Wait, are you transitioning? Is that the word? No, we're good. No. What? What? Hey, it's 2018. Fucking grow up. Jesus. <laughs> Brendan is the heel of the room so quick. Here. Okay, man, I, just don't... Oh, I didn't have my glasses on. Da 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 <laughs> That's Brendan taking off his clothes. He's looking good. Oh, don't worry, it'll come. Oh, oh yeah. Um, Leo, Leo. Now I've got to do the show with an erection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the pain. Leo, uh, you're an amazing comedian, but you're also a pun master, is that right? Oh, uh, yeah, I was UK pun champion 2015, which is like the comedic equivalent of the WWF, like whatever the. Scotty <laughs> Goldman. <laughs> 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 yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, I, I've seen you do a show where people just throw things at you and you'll yeah. do puns. So yeah, if I, if ideas, not, not pints of beer or anything. It's like... 
Um, if, if I just said wrestling, do you have puns for that? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> oh, is that shit? Oh, yeah, yeah, I used to think uh, Willie Nelson was a painful wrestling hold. <laughs> Also, uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of female wrestlers now. Is it Ronda Rousey? She's big in the WWE, WWF. Whatever. Yeah. It's got W's in it. That's all I know. Um, but uh, yeah, like, I love, I love uh, watching the women's weightlifting. Uh, I love to see a good clean snatch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love to see a good clean snatch and jerk. All right. Wait a minute. Is that a pun or just innuendo? <laughs> in fact, I don't think it's even innuendo. It's I think just, it's just it's, saying what it is. It's just. <laughs> It's just, I like cunt. <laughs> it's just my bizarre fetishes, to be honest. You know what I mean? I like to see Eastern European women lifting weights. That is. Well, I like cunt. <laughs> Can I do one? Yeah, do it, man. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, battle royals, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're a bit over the top. <laughs> It made sense! 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 Cult knows words! Cult knows words! Cult knows words! Um, and then Leo, okay, so then just when we talk about wrestling, did you like, I know you talked a little bit about the old the old uh, British wrestlers, yeah. which I love. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've ever met any wrestlers, if you have any memories of wrestlers. When I say wrestling, is that what first comes to mind for you? Yeah, I mean, also, uh, I, run a, I run a show called Hating Live with my mate Darius Davies, who actually trained as a wrestler, uh, took steroids and everything, got, like, good at it. <laughs> and you, you would not believe how, you would not believe how tiny he is for somebody who took steroids, you know what I mean? But um, he's like a child model, you know? <laughs> I love that that's all you think there is to it. He goes, no. he's trying to be a wrestler, you know, took steroids, the whole nine yards. No, I no, understand there's more, but I mean, I think if you're really committed, you take the steroids, you know what I mean? Because that, <laughs> that makes your hair fall out, yeah, Brendan. Yeah. It makes your hair fall out. Oh, I fucked my hair out in the 90s. <laughs> you fucked your hair out? Oh, dear God, yeah, yeah. Ecstasy, and then fucking it was before. Don't worry. Ecstasy okay. doesn't make your hair fall out. No, but when you fuck for eight hours, yeah, it does. <laughs> wow. I think you're fucking wrong. Uh, <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. really? Well. <laughs> but yeah, Daddy's. Daddy's uh, did all the you know all the training and stuff. Was wrestling, and he broke his back. He, he did a show. He did a show about it last year called Road to WrestleMania. It was amazing. Broke his back. Had to like have rods put in his back, which uh, they didn't let him. Make them himself, because that would have been a rod for his own back. Uh, um. <laughs> Although, in fairness, you used the words in the pun before you did the pun. You went, he got a rod in his back. Yeah, so he made a rod for his back. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. like, like Stuart, or another rod I can't think of right now. Rod Stuart, there was a pun. Come on, no? Okay, well, I lost all credibility with my own crowd. This is wonderful. Rod Stuart, he's a person. A rod in his back. <laughs> a rod in his back. <laughs> and other rods. Whatever you do, never think out loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe I should uh, stop with the talking and start with the... Oh! With the... Oh, I'm so sorry to all you guys. Oh. Leo, uh, what is this? you were ready to watch a little wrestling! Oh. If you're still in town and you want to see Leo on stage, he does a show called Hate and Live every single night, 12, 15 a.m. at the Free Sisters. People put stuff in a bucket about things that they want the comedians to talk about how much they hate, and then they riff about it. I did it once, pretty scary, but I did really well, and I'd recommend the show. And that show's at 12.15, which means it goes to 1.15, and basically everybody in the crowd drinking beer, having a good time, and that's going to obviously remind us that this whole Ed Fringe series is sponsored by Beer 52, and Beer 52 is sponsoring today. They're based out of Edinburgh, so it only makes sense. And for those of you in the UK, they want to send you a free case of craft beer. This is for real. Just pay $2.95 shipping, and they'll send you a free case just to show you how good their beer is. That's how they're going to get you. Beer 52 is the world's most popular monthly craft beer discovery club. Every month they focus on a new country or theme. Also, there's no minimum commitment. Take the free beers. If you don't dig it, you can just cancel or you can even just pause it at any time. But 
once you're in. They're going to send you eight of the most incredible craft beers every single month. It's just like Pro Wrestling Crate, but without the shirts and with delicious beer. I want you to think less Sandman and Steve Austin beers and more like William Regal beers. <laughs> just head over to beer52.com slash Colt and claim your free case today. That's the word beer, the number 52.com slash Colt. Eight beers a month. Sounds like a Beatles song, and we're pretty close to Liverpool, so it's all coming together. Did you like that improv I just did at the very end of the Beer 52 commercial? <laughs> Essentially, that is what our show is. Some of the improvs are great, some not so great. And on Sunday, August the 19th, Dylan Gott joined us. And here's a reference I want to make sure you understand before we talk about it on stage. Dylan has a podcast with podcast regular John Hastings called The Wrestler Review, it's very funny. These two are hilarious. And they have a lot of fans, and their fans are called the Cum Monkeys. Their choice, not mine, but it is talked about before, and we do talk about it on the stage. So that is your reference for Dylan Guy. Do you guys do this every time where it's easy to tell who the guest is by the only guy wearing sleeves? <laughs> it's pro wrestler and midlife crisis man live in the monkey barrel. Hey, Cum hey. Monkeys is a good name for fans. Wait, so your it is fans a good name. It's amazing. Your fans' names are Cum Monkeys. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, for what reason? Because cum, and then there's another word there. <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted the word cum, and then a second word. It could be cum couches. <laughs> you just well, take all the cum. We are doing our show here at the Monkey Barrel. Yeah. Which I feel, essentially, now everybody is here is a cum monkey. <laughs> No one's happy about that. No one's happy. <laughs> no one... Go for it. Oh, I was going to say hi to you. Hey, how are you hi, doing? Cole? Hey, Brandon? Uh, so for those of you who don't know, this is our uh, little world. You know you've done this a bunch, but I like to always kind of uh, ask the guests uh, what they think about when it comes to wrestling, their thoughts about wrestling, maybe who you liked as a kid. Did you ever have any interactions with wrestlers? Or uh, maybe did you get uh, wrestling in the house? Uh, you know. Wrestling in the house? My favorite wrestler as a kid was the Big Boss Man because I thought there was a good chance that I could look like him as an adult, and that... <laughs> That was absolutely correct. I, I shot low and I hit the target, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, do you know like how when you ever you listen to po uh, wrestling podcasts, like guys that were there at the time talking about big big boss man, and they're like, think about the boss man, right? Is he could go, he could go, and it's like by what standard? <laughs> By the 80s standard. Also, I, I'm surprised how no one ever talks about how that man for somehow kept all of his body fat just in the upper half. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever seen like 1986 Ray Trailer, it's just like Gwyneth Paltrow's legs on just a barrel. It's fucking disgusting. And that's how I look. Check this out. Look at that. Hey. Look at these beautiful legs. That hurt a lot. Were you a little, so much. Were you a little upset when he came back and was like kind of in shape? I I was watching. I was watching wrestling at that time. I was watching Raw. And then when the Big Boss Man reveal if he attacked Stone Cold, I screamed yes. And everyone else was like, "What are you excited about?" <laughs> It was one of the many moments I was too nerdy for the room. Hopefully there's none tonight. I think this is the right room. Speaking <laughs> as the only 40-plus something person on the stage, <laughs> yeah, well, you get to a certain point in your life where you realize, well, I better lose some of this or I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? Brace yourself, Dylan. Because <laughs> I'm willing to fucking bet one of us has got cardio and it ain't you. <laughs> Midlife, yeah, I'm not this in the midlife the crisis, I you're going to die soon. I knew I shouldn't have said the midlife crisis thing, because I was like, Brendan's just going to spend the rest of the show trying to get revenge. Also, you have dandruff, fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be one of the comments. Brendan, did you ever look at any wrestler and say, like, oh, I could be him? Uh, all of them, constantly, I'm deluded. <laughs> <laughs> That Ladies and gentlemen, said, I'm adorable. I'm gonna run with that for two years. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not met me? Um, Ladies and gentlemen, this is the third member of the revival, Brendan Burns. Everybody. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna give a warning to uh, those over there who've never been to the show. Oh, you're not gonna like this. Uh, this is a tradition Brendan started on his own without my permission. Uh, <laughs> Dylan, I got a question for you. What's that? You want to watch a little wrestling? Yeah! 
Everyone's upset. Everyone's upset. <laughs> Please stop touching the young women, Brandon. <laughs> Dylan God does not have a show. He was just up doing some gigs and then heading back to Canada. But luckily, the next night, Monday, August 20th, his podcast partner of The Wrestler Review, John Hastings, joined us for one of the best shows of The Fringe. John's amazing. He always brings such light to the show. And here's a reference you're going to need to know before we get into this. Some reason, uh, Brendan brought up the idea of the playwright Samuel Beckett. And uh, I told him that I had no clue who Samuel Beckett was. And the only Beckett that I knew was the price guide for the baseball cards when I grew up. Hastings, in the back, was dying to get on stage to tell this Samuel Beckett fact that had to do with wrestling. And I said, we'll get to it when you get on stage. Don't yell at me because I don't know anything about culture. And uh, that got a laugh in the room. And then it got a bit of a chant, and they continued the chant once John got on stage. Also, I do play it up a little bit that I'm dumb. I mean, I am dumb. I don't know much, but I've seen to notice that the crowd really enjoys when I'm really dumb, and I enjoy that character. It's a fun character. I think it's a character that suits me best. It's me turned up to 100, uh, just the way you would do it in wrestling. I'm doing that on stage. So enjoy the madness that is John Hastings. What's up, everybody? How are we? We good? Yes? Yes! Strap in for some fucking facts. So, Samuel Beckett, the playwright. <laughs> after the su- Thank you very much. After the success of the play Waiting for Godot, moved to France. And his next door neighbor was Andre the fucking giant. No way. 100%. Oh, yeah, it was, it was. 100%. And Andre was so big he couldn't fit on the school bus. So Samuel Beckett, the weird fuck that he was, was just like, get in my truck. I'll drive you to school. Did you know this cult? Wait, is he the guy from the documentary? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's Samuel Beckett. Oh, he's just a weird old Yay! Guy. And culture! 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 culture. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Wait. Fuck him up, culture. Fuck him up. <laughs> Fuck him up, culture. Fuck him up. You know, our first year as well, we made a reference to Sigmund Freud. And like, uh, Cabana, like, for once was like, I know who that is. I know yeah. exactly who that is from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> Fuck them up, culture. Fuck them up. <laughs> we, yeah. all, we also would have accepted Frazier's dad. <laughs> wow, that's so crazy that that guy's, like, I, because that guy's been in, like, an A&E documentary about Andre and now the HBO documentary about Andre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, he's just, like, a he is a wrestling star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't... He was a huge wrestling fan. Wrestling for a lot of playwrights, especially when they were coming out of the oeuvre of early 20th century. We were fascinated by wrestling because they felt it was an extension of what theater was supposed to be, which was an art of the people. <laughs> and it's quotations like that that made my adolescent years an avalanche of pussy. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a deluge of labia. Just, out of the way, ladies! I've had too much sex! Also, you, were, <laughs> you were getting all up in their, in their oeuvres. <laughs> In my head, that's what it is. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. That, we're, we're talking about that lady part, right? Yeah. So wait a minute. So I effectively brought up the only playwright you could possibly know. Yeah. And you were like, nah, it's the fucking footballer. Yeah. And he, it wasn't even, it was a baseball reference to the book you look at baseball cards. So what drives me crazy is you're from Chicago, yes. the home of American theater. Oh, I, that movie Step sucked. It, no, fuck you. <laughs> Whoever wrote that play, Chicago, not for me. Is that what you're talking about? No. In a way, yes. Yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> David Mamet, I will give you $100 if you can tell me one thing David Mamet has written. Oh. Don't oh. fucking help him. Something from the sea? <laughs> a mammoth? Something a mammoth. From... A mammoth is a, na- a big animal, no? <laughs> That's like, wait, hang like, on. Like, you know, mean... Woolly Mammoth is not even a fucking ocean animal. <laughs> yeah, it's a land animal. It's prehistoric. David, oh, Man- David Mammoth wrote, um, okay, in my head, uh, oh, he, something with David Bowie. Did, he, did David Bowie do a movie with David Mammoth? <laughs> I can't even oh, tell if he's pretending or not. <laughs> oh, wait, that's Labyrinth, I think. <laughs> <laughs> David Labyrinth? Oh, my sweet mother of God. You know, isn't it so refreshing at the Edinburgh Festival where the, you see so many comics pretending to be too smart for the room? Yeah. And then, and then there's just this adorable fuck here. Yeah. 
that is so proud of hey, what he doesn't know. Listen, you asked me the opening match of WrestleMania 8, I will nail it, all okay, right? Okay, opening match of WrestleMania 8. Tito Santana versus Shawn Michaels. Oh, oh shit! Yeah. Take that, alternative fucking comedy memorial society! Yeah. <laughs> Technically speaking, it was El Matador. Yeah! Avalanche of pussy. Avalanche of pussy. Yeah. And that Avalanche. got you all that oeuvre. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, ladies. I cannot help you with your vaginas. I'm too busy educating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hastings is fucking always my favorite yeah. episode. I, I, hey. know, I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, John, I want to hear you every week talk about wrestling with someone who looks like Brendan if he was stung by a million bees. <laughs> Wait, I don't know which one of this that's about. No, it's, it's about Dylan. My, the, I host a podcast uh, called The Wrestler Review. The guy who helps us research it every week is right there. That's Christopher Hobson. Ladies and gentlemen, please give uh, him a round of applause. Yes. We're, we're because out. of this, wait. Because it, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Because if there's one thing researchers love, it's attention. Yes. <laughs> because you, without oh, that like, man, yeah. the hour and a half I and Dylan got talked about Buckhouse Bunk today <laughs> would have been fucking weird. <laughs> What about when you did one of me? My God, I have never fucking walked a razor line more because our show gets very mean. <laughs> yeah, it's and very it's anti jewy <laughs> <laughs> Not anti. <laughs> you guys have made some mistakes and we're there to call you on it. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Sorry, sorry. Oh, I guess you guys are against the president. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're wearing the hat. <laughs> it's an Expos hat. We were there first. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Also, wow, that was a dead end. Yeah. yeah well, maybe but you know what we could do? I, yeah, I think this is a great call. Front row, I am so sorry. This lady does not look into it. You, lady, ma'am, you might even want to go I'm to the... Do what he does, but I'm oh, there's going to be here, the there, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What John? <laughs> Brendan? Yeah. You want to watch a little wrestling? Yeah. Oh, God, Come off. How were you not ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucking excited. We've already been anti-Semitic. Where else will we go? Yeah. You only have a couple more chances to see John Hastings. He does stand up. He's been selling out a lot too. 8.30 p.m. at the Pleasance Courtyard every single night. And we do have one more sponsor on the podcast this week. And you heard Cody Rhodes promoting it on Being the Lead. And now I'm going to give you a promo code so you can try it for free. I'm talking about sex. Well, actually, I'm talking about sex when you're ready to go. Well, I'm, I'm not selling you sex, but I am talking about Blue Chew. And with Blue Chew, you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. BlueChew.com is the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know that they work. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill, so you can be ready anytime, day or night. Blue Chew is prescribed online and ships right to your door in a nice, discreet package. That means there is no in-person doctor visits or waiting at the pharmacy. Basically, there's no awkwardness, all right? Blue Chew is made in America, ships direct, so it's cheaper than a pharmacy. For my listeners or for my listeners' lovers who want to help, let's get you a free shipment with the promo code COLT. Just pay the $5 in shipping. Go to B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. Use the promo code COLT and try it for free. Blue Chew, the better, cheaper, faster choice. And uh, I think that's a great segment into our last guest of the week on Tuesday, August 21st. I would have to explain that Phil Ellis doesn't know much about wrestling, but is such a funny fucker. But uh, I think Brendan explains it for us in the, uh, in the clip itself. So enjoy this little chat with Phil Ellis. <laughs> Oh, hey, Phil. How are you? Hey, Phil. I'm good. It's, it's nice to have a walk out so early on in my uh, stint. Good. I'm happy. Are you? No. God, no. God, no. What? Yeah, what brings the sadness? What brings us? The, there's too many. Anyway, it's, let's not bring the mood down. We're all having a fun time, aren't we? Oh, okay. Let's talk about wrestling. That's why I'm here for, because I fucking <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Phil's fucking one of my wrestling. favorite guests. I love having Phil on, because like towards the end of the run, it's always good having Phil on like towards the end of the run, because he always brings something like brand fucking new. Because up until now, it's all diehard wrestling fans and nerds and everything, and they just like say inside stuff. And then you get Phil on, and he has no fucking idea who anyone is, I don't know what anyone on. does, and it's just baffling to him. And I like just stare, watching him stare at this show the same way that cows look at cars. See? <laughs> I, 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 I am a fan of wrestling, though. 
Yeah. Any human contact. Oh. oh. Hello. Any human contact. <laughs> Any human contact, Colt. Ooh. There's a bit. Now, if, if you're wondering, soft like butter. The... <laughs> Wait, what was the first half of that question? I don't know just what Colt feels like. I'm sure a lot of people Does wonder. Does he fuck? He's buff as fucking... Look at that. Get in there. Fucking yeah, but the yourself. skin is soft like... Soft he's... skin, soft skin. Hard ah. muscles, soft skin. Thank Wonderful. you. Uh, so, Phil, but, yeah. if I was to talk about wrestling, like, did you ever watch wrestling as a kid? Do you remember anything about wrestling? Did no. wrestling ever seep into your pop culture of any kind? Uh, no, I was more of a turtle fan. I won't lie to you, Colt. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? Turtles are wrestling at my school. What? You lived or died by the turtle. <laughs> Teenage mutants or just regulars? No, just turtles. We're yeah. Just <laughs> <figuring out. laughs> I was going to say it's a really bizarre choice. Crap race. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> Those are turtles going at the same pace. Pretty much everyone, everyone's a winner, a bit like the Paralympics. Um, <laughs> oh, toughen up, cunts, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you're not allowed to be thin skinned because you're wrestling fans. <laughs> You like a genre where black guys play witch doctors. It's true, it's true. And it's so racially insensitive, you don't even know which black guy I mean. <laughs> Phil, there was a lot of black guys who played witch doctors. Oh. I do. I have one black friend. Uh, what the f- <laughs> What? What? <laughs> Congratulations? What the hell? <laughs> I don't even like him that much. Has he been a... I can't get rid of him. Is... <laughs> he works at Boots. Oh, you know what? It's so funny. It's, that's the bit I do when the crowd get offended. And I'm like, fuck you, witch doctors. And only Phil can then take that and go, well, I think I'll make it weird. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> weird. He likes a drink. Huh? Don't we all, eh? <laughs> so sad. <laughs> Uh, Probably a bad book in this, isn't it? No, this is good. Okay, so <laughs> get, it's always I, my favorite. Do I get any of the book in money? <laughs> yeah, yeah if, you, if you make some jokes. Well, I'll try my best. A lot of pressure. Uh, we also had a wrestle for funds and games, which is your uh, children's <laughs> slash Children's show. show. You like kids? <laughs> you try, try shows where you love funds and games. It's a kid's show uh, with an alcoholic host. Hello. <laughs> And you brought on me as a wrestler. You bit. came on. You you went to wrestle me. Uh, I switched who it was who was going to wrestle you at the last minute. <laughs> I just think when you go, do you like kids? You probably should not what try your best to sound like Jimmy Savile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, or, or, dress, or dress like him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was oh, a wrestler. Full circle. All yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, he put his coat and shoes on uh, Tim Renkow, who has. Pretty uh, severe choreoathetoid cerebral palsy. Yep. You said it better than I would. Yep. Um, and then better I, than he would. And then... Uh, <laughs> Tough on the fuck up! Black guys! Witch doctors! Yeah. 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 Get a hard shell like a turtle, you wrestling pricks. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, that split. They didn't even split the room. They hate me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think they'll love you once we get to the clips. Yes. And, um, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll win you over. <laughs> and by the way, all of you lot fanning, uh, as you're doing that, you're burning off energy. It's counterproductive. I won't bother. <laughs> hey, Phil, I got a question. Yeah, yeah. You want to watch a little wrestling? <laughs> yeah. 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 Can I? Can I? Can I? That's our show, folks. Can, can I do Can I can I can I do that? Can I can I do that? I've never done it. Yeah, you want to go? Do you mind? I don't want to slow down. Do whatever you want. I just want to see if people will catch me. Yeah. Oh, he wants human contact. That's what yeah. it is. Hey, hey, you got a, I got a question for you, Coca Cabana. Yeah, what's that? You want to watch some bad wrestling? Let's watch some bad wrestling. Oh, da 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 da. da. Da, 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 da. He just he just wants to leave. Da, da, da. Oh god. Oh good Phil. lord. <laughs> that was his da. way of trying to leave the gig. <laughs> He's like, no one's laughed at me so far. I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> it was bound to happen eventually, wasn't it? Rosie, get his ass back yeah. up front. Phil! 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 Hey. Now I will ask this to everybody. I'm so sorry. I will can't. ask this to everybody who has who he trampled on. <laughs> Please don't sue me. I don't yes. need another lawsuit. Yes. 
Yeah. Thank you. It's all I ask. And if you're still at the Fringe, I saw Phil's show. It's very wonderful. It's 7.40 p.m. at The Hive. My mom does send her best. She misses everyone. She misses me, most importantly. She said, please send those questions at hashtag Ask Cabana Mom. She wants to answer all the questions that you have about wrestling that she will have no clue about. Basically, Phil Ellis and my mom know the same amount. of. No, I'd say my mom knows more about pro wrestling than Phil Ellis. But Phil Ellis isn't as cute when uh, when he does it. I'm going to put an Easter egg at the very end of the show, so you have to listen through the plugs. Something funny from Brendan and I's monologue this week, so you have to listen to these plugs and... Upcoming events! All right, the best way that you can support ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, Twitter and Instagram at Colt Cabana, Facebook slash AOW Podcast slash Colt Cabana. Each week I'll choose one person who reviews and rates five stars on iTunes and I'll send them a signed show ticket from the Japanese promotion DDT with me on the ticket. My storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringe, plus past archives of this show, old and new, are ad-free on StitcherPremium.com slash Colt. Use the code Colt, get a free month. ColtWrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe your promoter won't put me on your upcoming show or convention. Because of a change in Ring on our schedule, I actually do have some opening dates the first weekend in October. And uh, Saturday, October 13th is now open, so that's where you would hit me up. I also have a YouTube channel. Also, ColtCommander.com is my website. That's where you can find my P.O. Box, and you can send me something fun. Upcoming, the rest of the shows at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival all the way through the 26th of August. Pre-book at Fringe.com. Thursday and Friday, August 30th and 31st, Chicago, Illinois, AAWrestling.com. Saturday, September 1st, Hoffman Estates. WGN and pay-per-view all in I'll be on Sunday September 2nd Schaumburg Illinois I'm doing a live podcast 1030 to noon starcast.com Marty DeRosa Sarah Shockey and the Young Bucks amongst others will be on the live podcast Sunday night Chicago Heights Warrior Wrestling.net September 5th and 6th back to London England Revolution Pro Wrestling.com September 8th and 9th Manchester England Wrestling Media Con.com Friday September 14th Cleveland Ohio AI Wrestling.com Saturday September 15th Hazeltown Pennsylvania PPW Wrestling.com Sunday September 16th East Greenwich Rhode Island a 1 o'clock show and a 6 o'clock show beyond wrestling online.com friday september 21st westbrook maine limitless wrestling.com saturday september 22nd wine dot michigan go bcwa.com intro music is by the ukulele teacher on youtube outro music by super fun yeah yeah rocket chip podcast cover art and design by jimmy lee photo by james musclewhite thanks to our sponsors highspots.com a vod service that plays all the goodies pwg five dollar wrestling trent and chuck plus you could buy ama knee pads gear mask even a wrestling ring that is now being put into onehourtees.com who runs prowrestlingtees.com they've ordered a ring and I know they're going to do some fun stuff with the ring plus maybe I'll do some training out there so if you live in Chicago inquire if you want to do a little training with uh, your favorite independent wrestler Colt Cabana. I'll tell you what I'm doing right now I recorded this podcast and in an hour I'm going to go do a show called Comedy Club for Kids where Brendan and I are going to do comedy for 6 to 12 year olds I'll be dressed up in the singlet. He'll be the loud Australian who's going to try not to swear. All right, this has been the Art of Wrestling for Cole Cabana. I'm Cole Cabana. Thanks. Improv, thank yes. you. Yes. A Beckett. <laughs> Improv cunts, they always go like, Keats. Oh, who is Beckett, though? Beckett, you're kidding me, right? Are you? So I know Beckett as the card value guy. If you collect baseball cards in America and you want to know the value of that baseball card, you look in a Beckett. That is a Beckett. He's a playwright, mate. You're at a fucking arts festival. Six fucking years, Cabana. Can some knowledge rub off? Okay, I will tell you... What? What? Hastings, what? I got a thing that will relate Samuel Beckett to wrestling. Okay. Should we just get him up here? Can you, can you hold on to that thought? Hold on to it. It's fucking good. Okay. Oh, my God. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. With a build like this, it can't possibly fail. <laughs> well, Brendan, there's... So, right. So, there's some guy named Beckett, right? Apparently. And he's, he's cultured or something, right? <laughs> or he's part of culture. <laughs> he has something to do with culture. culture. And... Uh, culture. <laughs> right. 
Well, listen, I'm a fucking jock from America. All I do is hang out with pro wrestlers and talk about meats with protein and beef, right? Like, that's all. Wait, I... hang on. Meats with protein in it? Yeah, yeah. What meats don't have protein in it? Okay. No more lists. Come on. Who's. No, wait. Teaching cult one thing at a time. Teaching cult one sure. thing. Okay, who's Beckett? And what meats don't have protein in them? Yeah. This is a whole different show I do at 5.50 at the Banshee <laughs> Labyrinth or whatever. 